In this short video, we will uh, do the DuPont analysis on McDonald's and Johnson & Johnson. DuPont analysis is a method of breaking down return on equity, which is the net income per dollar of equity, and that's the amount of accounting income earned per share, uh, per, uh, earned divided by the book value of what the shareholders have contributed. Okay, so it'll give you a little bit measure of book value return on, on equity. But as we'll see with McDonald's, it's kind of misleading because they have negative equity on their balance sheet. If we look at shareholders' equity, they have been buying back so many shares of stock over the last couple of years that it's actually caused their shareholders' equity to turn negative. That's the book value, but if we look at the average share price times the number of shares outstanding, the market value or their market capitalization is still a positive number. So when we do an ROE for McDonald's, it's going to be kind of misleading. It is unusual to have negative equity, especially in a Dow component or a large company like uh, McDonald's, but I suspect that will reverse itself in, in years to come. All right, so back to the ratios. Net profit margin, net income per dollar of sales, gives you a measure of how profitable the sales operations are. The higher that number, generally, the more profit they make per sale. The total asset turnover is the sales per dollar of assets. And that gives you a measure of how, many, uh, uh, of how efficient they are at generating their sales with the asset base they have. If you multiply the net profit margin times the total asset turnover, you get the return on assets. Let's quickly review the uh, DuPont analysis. The net profit margin, net income per dollar of sales, multiplied by sales over assets, what happens is that Sales cancels itself out, so uh, the sales cancel out, and what you have is net income over assets, and that's the return on assets ratio. If you multiply net income over assets times assets over equity, now the assets cancels themselves out, and what you have is ROE, net income over equity. Now, the beauty of DuPont analysis is it gives you a better idea of where the return on equity came from. Is it from making a lot per dollar of sales? Generally, when you have high prices, you make a high net profit margin on your sales, but you'll make fewer sales, so the sales per dollar of assets goes down. So you could actually raise prices and actually reduce your return on assets. The return on assets is simply based on how well you generate sales and generate net income. The equity multiplier measures how much borrowed money you use to finance your assets. And in this instance, this measures the financial leverage. So if you have a high debt ratio, total liabilities over total assets, You'll also have a high equity multiplier. They measure the same thing. Higher equity multiplier is higher risk. All else would constant. So there's a lot of ways that a firm can go about increasing its return on equity. And let's go look at what the ratios show us for McDonald's. McDonald's net profit margin has been fairly stable over the period. It hovers between 19 and 20 percent, although they took a dip in these two years. Uh, and then if we look at their total asset turnover, it's close to 0.8. So that's 0.8 dollars of sales, or 80 cents of sales for every dollar of, of assets. So what that gives us is an ROA of right around 15%. Again, they took a dip in these two years here that's 2014 and 2015, largely because the net profit margin went down. In 2015, the total asset turnover was lower, but that is mainly because if you look at their income statement, 
or rather their uh, balance sheet, the cash account was really high on that date in that year. And I suspect the reason for that was that McDonald's on that particular day had amassed a bunch of cash to buy back its shares of stock. Remember the balance sheet is on a particular day. Now they've also been buying back shares of stock like it's going out of style. If we look at the share count, it went from roughly a billion shares to 850 million shares. They bought back 150 million shares over this period. And they bought back so much and put it into the treasury that they had 30 billion of treasury stock. Now it's 22 billion additional dollars worth over this five year period. And most of that occurred in the last two years. That's what's causing the negative shareholders' equity. So they're increasing their financial leverage. Now, DuPont analysis is meaningless when you have negative equity. But what we can see, the impact was as they increased shareholders' equity in these years, it's actually ratcheting up the return on equity, even though the return on assets is the same or, or actually slightly lower. By using the additional financial leverage, they actually increase the returns to the shareholders. If we compare that to Johnson & Johnson, Johnson & Johnson is actually improving their net profit margin over this period. went from 15 up to 20, up to 22, up to 23. So they've actually improved their sales profitability and they've had a slight decrease in the total asset turnover, but it's really pretty mild. And the net result was that their ROA has actually increased from 8 to 10 to uh, 11 and a half or so over these last couple of years. And they've also slightly increased their uh, financial leverage. Okay, so what we see with J and J is they went from a 16% ROE to a 23% ROE. Most of that occurred because they improved their sales profitability as opposed to McDonald's, which has a slight decrease in sales profitability, their total asset turnover stayed the same, their ROE at McDonald's went up simply because they're using more financial leverage. So that's how we use DuPont analysis. Usually we're using it to track a company over time, but uh, in this case it's kind of instructed to see how different companies can, can do different approaches to increase their ROE.